14 minutes away from the second at Belmont. Joining us right now, however, Teddy Grimthorpe, racing manager for Judmont Farms, the great Frankel, the highest rated horse in the world, according to Time Form. In action, you can see him live here tomorrow on TVG as part of our UK Summer Racing Series. Teddy, thank you for joining us. So great to have you on the show and get your thoughts on Frankel returning tomorrow on his four year old debut in the Lock and Stakes in Newbury. First, let's start off with the, the rumors that uh, the horse was injured, was going to be retired. Obviously, those were incorrect. But what a whirlwind you've gone through with this horse over the last month or so. Yeah, it's been a roller coaster. Um, he was just going out to do a piece of work, and he banged himself at the back of his, on the side of his tendon in, in, in front of his right ball. Um, it didn't go down as quickly as we thought. We, uh, the initial reaction that it was superficial, the damage, uh, but it didn't go down quite as quickly as we thought, um, so it was of some concern. But then, then it did. Um, we scanned him a couple of times, and he scanned clear the tendons and everything, so there was no damage, no internal damage. So he's able to resume, um, and he's worked twice. Sort of, well, everything in Newmarket is public, but he's worked. He worked on uh, 2000 Guinea Day and in, in front of the stands and went, uh, went pretty nicely and worked again uh, properly the other morning and everyone was seemed very happy and he seems to have progressed um, very satisfactorily uh, without any further hiccups. So uh, we're, we're, you know, we're very positive and uh, excited and looking forward to it. Now, what are your expectations for tomorrow? I mean, it's the first start back in six months, the first start of his four-year-old campaign. Is he fully cranked up or is this a stepping stone and we're going to see him progress in the campaign? Uh, um, I think you'd always hope that a, a horse would progress after its first start, um, after, uh, after a layoff, whatever. Obviously, if you go to a Group 1, Grade 1, you've got to play game. Right? There's no hiding place in these, in, in these sort of races anywhere. You know, that, and that's the true of any sport. You know, you've, got to, you've got to bring your best um, when you, if you want to win these major prizes. Um, and the same applies here. But obviously, the, with that little setback, um, it's not going to be quite as straightforward as we, you, we might hope. But that having been said, his preparation has been good and solid since then. And um, we, we, we hope that it, it will. It will provide a springboard for the whole season. We know throughout his races, he's been very keen always looks to jump out to the front and, and be on the lead as he's progressed now into his, his four-year-old season. He's just getting started here, obviously, but is he a horse that you do see being able to relax a little bit more in this four-year-old season? Yeah, I, th I think he's matured both mentally and physically. He's Over the winter, he probably hasn't grown a great deal, but I think he's thickened out a bit, and I think he's a little bit stronger. He's certainly a, always been a pretty powerful horse, so I, I think in that way, he is impressive. Um, mentally, uh, he's been good. He's, he's settled pretty much in his work. I think the thing that is deceptive of him is his stride. He's got he's got such a wonderful stride pattern uh, that he just looks to be going that much better. Wants to be going a stride faster than the, than the average horse. So he is a bit deceptive like that. But um, that is a beautiful. Frank Miramati here. I had one question for you. I know that last year it was completely out of the question to run in the United States. What a fitting tribute to name this horse for the great Bobby Frankel, who did such an amazing job for you. I know it's been stated that he won't be coming here. Is there any possibility of reconsidering that thought for the Breeders' Cup to, to let the North American fans have a chance to see him uh, over here? Uh, um, it's certainly, in, it's been in Prince Carl's mind. Um, that if it was at all possible to bring Frankel um, to the state, um, he would like to do that. Uh, obviously, the the rail sadness were rarely for me, is, and, and also therefore hopefully for American fans, is that Santa Anita moved from uh, the pro ride to back to the dirt a few years ago, um, and it would have been, I, I think, a, a, an all weather surface at Santa Anita for the Breeders' Cup Classic would have been um, a, an absolute essential and number one target. Um, with that not being in place, I would say it was unlikely that we would try him off dirt, whatever, but certainly probably not his first start in, a, in, in the Classic. 
that leaves only really realistically one or two other races. And the mile, at the moment, we're looking to go the mile a quarter route. Uh, he will go well, well after tomorrow, he'll probably go to Ascot and look at the probably the mile race at the moment, the Queen Anne on the first day. And then hopefully we're looking at progressing mile and a quarter eclipse stakes and then uh, the Judmont at York in, in, in August. Uh, Would you which, consider there's there's been talk of the purse being increased in the Sussex stakes at Goodwood in August to a million pounds? to face Black Caviar in what would be just a tremendous showdown. Is there consideration on your end of, of yeah, tackling that spot? Absolutely. I think the mantra that, that Prince Khalid has been most keen on, on saying with Frankel is that we must do the best for him um, rather than the sort of other either commercial or monetary um, incentives. We must do what we think is the best, best for the horse. And, and take him to the best. So if, if at the end, of, say, after Ascot, that Henry thought, or, the, or we, we really thought that a mile was, that was going to be the limit of him, um, then the Sussex Stakes would certainly come into play. Um, and, and we would be more than, more than had delighted to take on Black Caviar uh, at that. And that, of course, at the moment, they're on two sort of separate trajectories at the moment, I would say, with Black Caviar looking at the sort of six furlong, um, six furlong group one at Royal Ascot, the Diamond Jubilee. And again, that, that's, you know, that'd be up to them to decide uh, the programme. I know it would be a great clash, and I know from a lot of people's point of view, a lot of people would like to see it, but um, what's going to happen will happen. So, but it, it, it hasn't been ruled out. Well, that'd be, that would be quite a class that the world will be watching. We want to ask you quickly about uh, Frankel's full brother, Noble Mission, running tomorrow yeah. as well. Of course, he's won back-to-back -back yeah. starts. What about his thoughts uh, going forward tomorrow and may, potentially the Epsom Derby? Well, this is, this is really, we've taken him a little bit conservatively. He had the option of the Dante Stakes at, at York, which was won um, on Thursday. Um, Henry wanted to just take him not quite such a, uh, a fierce contest um, this time. So this is, again, we hope the horse is on an upward curve. Um, he'll, need to, he'll need to win nicely tomorrow, I would say, to, to, to be a realistic derby prospect. We just uh, wanted to once again re-emphasize how much it would mean to, uh, to so many fans here. Judmont has treated us to such amazing runners over the years. We are just uh, hoping that somehow, some way, it works out to see Frankel here in the United States. And I know that would be a tremendous, fitting tribute to Bobby Frankel as well. It, it would be. It would be. But it's, let's face it, it's been quite a good, pro, uh, quite a good tribute to Bobby already. Absolutely. I'd, I'd love to know what. <laughs> I, I'd love to know what he thought about it all. <laughs> Uh, he, he would probably say, send him to the United States. <laughs> that's because that's, that's, that's what you always did with the best horses for him, and, right, and well, I know he appreciated we, that. We, it made his career. We would, have a, we would have a maiden winner somewhere, and Bobby would be on the phone saying, is he coming? Is he coming? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck going forward in this campaign in 2012 with both Noble Mission and with Frankel. We appreciate you so much coming on and looking forward to see both those horses in action tomorrow. Great stuff. Thanks for calling. All right. Be well. Teddy Grimthorpe, okay. racing manager, Judmont Farms. And Frankel will try and remain undefeated. And you'll see it live here on TBG tomorrow morning, part of our UK Summer Racing Series. That is in the lock-in stakes.